Hi guys. No, it is not a hair video, even though I am going to be oiling my hair. Later on, I'm going to put some, some braids in. I've been having this these flu-like symptoms for almost two weeks now. And so today, the only thing I can actually do is sit here and ramble on with ease. <laughs> So since I since I've had my YouTube channel, I have been saying I'm going to talk about growing up without a mom. So today is the day for it. Where should I start? Whew. Uh, when I was about five or six, I realized that my mom and dad were not getting on very well. Those were sad times because I can recall a lot of fussing and arguing um, and close to fighting kind of time. That, that, that was what I remember. And it was unpleasant, to be honest. I remember sitting down and them arguing and, and, you know, as a child, you know, you feed off your parents' energy. So if your parents are cursing, um, fighting, the only thing you're going to do as a child is cry. So that's that's what my sister and I did. We just we just sat there and cried. I didn't fully understand now that I'm talking to you as an adult. I do understand why she left. So. I did not have anything against her leaving. What I did have a problem with is my sister and I felt abandoned. Like we just felt like we did something wrong or maybe she didn't want to have us as girls or we had all kind of issues, all kind of issues. The issues, I can't even explain all of them to you today. But anyways, so she left and my sister was two years younger. So all her kids, so she has six kids and all her kids are two years apart. And I'm the second oldest and then my sister and then all the other siblings. Um, so she left and believe me when I tell you that it was, it was difficult. It was difficult. Uh, people started treating us weird. We got we got weird treatment, and I don't know if if that was mainly because our mom wasn't around. I I don't know what their reason for treating us different was. You know, we would go to people's houses, and they wouldn't want us to sit on the sofa. You know, like little things like that. I won't bring up everything, but yeah, it was weird. And when she left, it. There, there was a level of silence because we were so used to all this arguing and then it went to silence, you know, like peace, quiet, tranquility. Yeah, it got back to. So I'm not going to argue. We, we were fine. But you see, for like five years, a solid five years, like after she left, shortly after, we struggled. Kaysen and I struggled. We struggled, especially when it was Mother's Day, when we went to school and, and all the other kids were creating cards and writing all the nicest things possible. And some kids were thinking of buying a present and, and so on. It, it, it was hard. <laughs> it was really and truly hard. And when we were at school and kids were talking about their parents, especially their mom, I would try and avoid conversations like that because I didn't I didn't I didn't really know what exactly to contribute to it. I I had no idea what it felt like to have a mom. The mother and daughter kind of bond that would naturally happen wasn't actually there. So I would shy away from conversations like that at school. And we went through a phase where we didn't have anyone to comb our hair. So daddy would, would often do our hair in ponytail and, and send us to school. And that happened for quite, a, quite some time until we were so tired of it. And then we had a few people in our community that were doing our hair. So they would do cornrows that would last for a week or more. And 
oftentimes they, they didn't necessarily want to do it. And to be honest, if I was in their position, I probably would get tired of it as well. So I can't blame them. So I went through a phase where I could tell that they were tired. And so one day, I, I remember this like it was yesterday. I, my sister had some cornrows in her hair and I put her in front of me and I said, you're going to sit here and I'm going to learn how to do this today because as of today, I'm going to start doing her hair. But So I would undo the cornrow and then try to do it again and then undo it and try to do it and undo it and try to do it. And then I would break when my sister got tired and she would go and run and play and whatever. And then she would come back and I would do it. And by the end of the day, I was very good at doing cornrows. So after that, I started doing my hair and doing hers. The biggest challenge for me was the fact that I was still very young and yet still I not only had to worry about myself, but I also had to take on not only a sister, big sister role, but I had to take on a slightly mom role as well to my younger sister. And it was not easy. <laughs> it was not easy because at least she had me whenever there were things that were going on in her mind that she needed to talk about. I didn't have anybody to discuss it with. You know, she was younger than me, so she barely understood. If, if I had emotional things that I needed to say, she wouldn't really understand. But I could understand her, so she could tell me what was happening with her, which was great for me. Um, so for years, I kept a lot of my emotions bottled inside because I, I just never talked to anybody about it besides I didn't have that person that I could speak to about it other than my dad so I just I just bottled everything in when we got to my like teenage years that's when everything starts getting interesting because I didn't know anything about sex which is something that a, a, a female, you know, you would have your mom to sit you down and explain to you certain things. I did not have that. My sister didn't have that. And so when I had my peers having group conversations about sex, I mean, apart from school, because they tell you things at school. And anyways, when I had my peers sit and they talk about sex, I'd always wonder, um, what are they talking about, you know? Uh, so I would have to, so my love of reading came from wanting to know certain things, especially sex. <laughs> I wanted to know because when I, when I was still a virgin, my peers were talking about having sex and so on. And I have always been strong-willed, so, I am not going to do something. Peer pressure have never been my thing. So I'm not going to do something because all, all the other girls are talking about it. So I went to the library in the evenings and read up about, about stuff so that whenever they were having conversations, I could join in freely and I didn't have to feel any type of way because I was still a virgin. And when I was through with them, they would never know that I have never done it. And that worked very well for me. <laughs> so that's that's how I dodged, dodged all kind of bullets when I was a teenager. I would read up things so that I was better able to have certain conversations with my peers. Um, but when it came to like knowing about your period, your menstrual cycle and all of that. Yes, as I said, they teach you stuff at school. But... You know, teach school can only teach you so much. <laughs> that's why that's why you have parents so that they can explain things more in depth for you. I didn't have that. So when my my most embarrassing moment I can think of was I don't remember what age I was, but I remember I was next door. I was next door at my neighbor's house and I was sitting on their bed, right? And we were all chatting and laughing. And by the time I got up, I was shocked to my daylight because everything just looked red. Everything looked red and they they have a brother and the brother was there and it was just, for me, it was so embarrassing. And uh, 
thank you Melrose because Melrose handled it very very well you know she called me one side because she has girls of her own as well so she called me one side and explained it to me and she gave me all the necessary stuff that I would need to make sure I'm okay she explained everything in depth for me and I was very grateful still grateful and she also called daddy and explained things to daddy but to be honest even in that time as much as I was very grateful to have you know that one person to explain it to me I wanted to have my mom. I wanted to have my mom to explain these things to me. If I had my mom and she explained all of that to me, I wouldn't have been as shocked as I was. I was shocked. Mm -mm -mm. So thankfully, because I'm the older sister, by the time my sister got to, to, to that stage where, you know, she should know about menstrual cycle and all of that, I was just like the encyclopedia because I made sure I, I knew what I needed to know so that she didn't have, you know, so she didn't have to have that problem. So I explained everything to the T to her. So she knew, she knew everything. <laughs> So all the things that I struggled with and didn't know, I made sure that in return, I learned about it so that I could explain it in full details to my sister. So I was playing a sister, sisterly role and a motherly role. <laughs> and there were, I think there are a lot of times when I was quite rebellious and and I think that was, you know, when, when you have issues with the fact that you don't have one parent in your life and you're struggling to understand why they're not around or why they're not coming to visit you, even though I'm sure they could. I got into all kind of trouble. I remember one time I asked, I asked this lady for some mangoes and she had so much mango on the tree and wasn't even eating them. And she said, I can't have the mangoes. And I, I went for I went for a bag at my house. We used to call them Lada bag in Jamaica. It's like a plastic bag. Um, and a similar bag to what you get at Tesco's when you go to Tesco's. But only that is black. Um, so we put groceries in them. Anyway, I went I went to the to the house and got a bag and I just I, cl I jumped over, jumped over the, the, the wall and climbed the tree and pick off the people and manga off of them tree. <laughs> and when I, when I looked, I saw some dogs running, running towards me. I didn't even realize that they have dogs in the yard and I ran for my life. I got into a lot of trouble and I think it's because there were so, so many things going through my mind that I didn't understand and I didn't have that, mo you know, that motherly bond with my mom for her to explain things to me. I, I used my energy in a different way, which wasn't always the best. And I would always get into fights at schools. I would always get, I, I would always get into fights, not because I wanted to, because I didn't, I didn't really... I wasn't the kind of person that would go around bothering kids, but because I was a quiet person, they would try it with me. And then I would always get into trouble because I did this or I did that. But no, our teenage years was, it wasn't as bad because by that time we, we were our, in, in our heads, we know that our mom wasn't around. So we started trying to think of different ways to keep it positive so for example after after five after like five years we on mother's day given the fact that we were sad and didn't really know who to give a card to didn't have anybody to give a card to we turned that around and started buying presents and making cards for daddy because after all he was playing mom and dad role so that's how we turned our emotions into positivity you know the negative emotions into positivity and it, it worked really well and from from that time we just started doing it like that and every every mother's day daddy would always get a present or we take him somewhere um that's that's how we dealt with it and christmas times i'm gonna tell you when it was christmas time it was the worst it was the worst it was like 
for me it was jealousy in my heart because I know that it's just going to be my dad, my sister and myself. It's not like we're going to have a bunch of family that's coming over or we're going to have mom popping by kind of thing. And everyone was cooking, shopping, putting up lights. You know, it, it was a festive kind of vibe. And it wasn't a festive kind of kind of vibe for us because oftentimes we didn't even know where the next meal was coming from. So much less to, to buy a cake or to buy the ingredients to make a cake. So it, it was hard but with that said i'm thankful that we did have a community of people who understood and so we are never out of cake they would always bring cake i mean we would get a lot of cake by the time people are finished giving us cake it could make one cake <laughs> so i'm very grateful that we had pe people in the community that were that caring because it it, it went a long way it really and truly did I'm trying to fix this phone because <laughs> I'm using my phone to record. Yeah, but Christmas time was was the hardest. I I think I I think when I was younger that was the saddest I've ever been. Christmas times, yeah. And so my sister and I would try to find ways to entertain ourselves or to make to make that season um, festive. And so we enjoyed singing and we would always be on the veranda, singing on the top of our lungs and playing the music very loud. People would always have problems with music <laughs> because we would always be singing, dancing, because that was our way of suppressing how we were truly feeling. It was it was a cover up for how we were feeling. And it was a good cover up because at least we weren't thinking about um, the fact that our mom is not around or we don't have family members coming around. Mind you, with that said, my grandma and my auntie, Auntie Linda and my grandma, they have always been present in our lives because I remember even when like the beginning stage when when my mom left, oh my, she would always come to the house and she was such a fit lady. She would walk everywhere. It used to annoy me. That woman was so fit. She would walk to Martha Bray. I mean, I think she would walk to Falmouth if she could. Like, she would walk everywhere. And because we were so young, it was just too much. The sun is boiling hot and she would always want to walk to places. And she, she was the one that taught us how to make sure the yard is tidy and the house is tidy. So she would always give us chores. And um, there are some biscuits. She would always give us them as treat whenever we did whatever she told us to do. I think they're called royal, ro royal. I think they're ro royal crackers or something like that. And it has like a hint of salt on it. Oh gosh, I used to love those like you, nobody's business. Oh, those biscuits. She used to buy them and put them in this container. And then whenever we came from school and we did our chores, she would she would give us a few of them. <laughs> And it was the best time, the best, best time. But I tell you, I tell you what I have noticed with myself from not growing up with a mom. I think this is why I have this hard shell, this hard Lisa. I think that's where it came from because I've learned how to bottle my emotions, not show certain emotions and not only that, my dad was the kind of person who, even if we were hungry, he didn't want the world to know that we don't have anything. So even if we went to someone's house and we didn't have anything to eat that day, there's no way they would be able to tell that we didn't have anything to eat because they could come in front of us with a plate of food and we wouldn't even bat an eyelid because that's how daddy taught us that, you know, if, if, if stuff like that is happening in your house, it doesn't mean the world needs to know. <laughs> So I think that's where my hard exterior came from. Because um, even Edward said it to me a few times, saying, oh, I'm such a hard person. But I had to, I had to develop it as, as a female. When, when I got older and I was able to analyze back in the past when I was growing up and um, how I am even today, I realized that 
my past has a lot to do with who I am today in terms of um, the fact that I don't bond easily with females. I, I, I never did. Even when I was going to school, when I was younger, never bonded with females. Um, I always gravitate towards males. I tend to get on way better with males. And even today, if I go somewhere, you are more than likely to find me in a male company than a female company, often. <laughs> I am a male company kind of girl. Can't deal with bullshit, um, can't deal with the the um, the cattiness and the gossips and all of that. And males are always just so straightforward to the point, you know, they're always realistic. You can have conversations with them and you don't have to worry about he said, she said kind of foolishness. So I always, I, I've always had male friends because it's just easier. The females are a lot of work. <laughs> if I had a mom around, I feel like there are a few things that I probably would have done differently in my life. But anyways, you can't think about those things now. All I'm saying is it, it wasn't the easiest. It really wasn't. And even today, we do communicate, but... I wish we had that kind of bond, kind of bond that I'm talking about that a mom and daughter have. I wish I had that. I still don't have it. And quite frankly, I don't really think that it will happen. And this is just me being real because that's all I know to be. But here we are. We we survived. I think I think I still have hang-ups about a lot of things and obviously there are a few things i i can't even touch on for personal reasons so i don't think i will add anything else even though i'm sure there's way more um and i will say that there was this one lady novelette oh my gosh novelette deserve a medal when everybody else, or not everybody else, but when some people were looking down at us, one, because we're poor, two, because we don't have a mom around, she has never been that kind of person. She would always come by and comb her hair and take us to Hague Show Ground. Hague Show Ground is an agricultural show that they have every year in um, in her area. And she would she would always try to to fill that gap somewhat. I don't know if she knew she was doing it, but she did so much. She would take us shopping if needed. If we needed clothes, she would give us clothes. Even my next door neighbor, Kim, oh my, Kim and Carrie, I will never forget. They would always give us, give us clothes, call us and give us clothes. Even today, I remember it. Kim would always call me and say, oh Lisa, can this fit you? Can that fit you? I remember it. You know, um, these these are things that I'm proud to talk about because I am so happy that they saw that we were in need and they were able to to help to help us and help Daddy along the way because Daddy couldn't buy things all the time. So Kim, Kerry, and Novlet, oh, you guys did the world for us. I still ha I still have clothing that Kerry gave me. <laughs> still. Top, I have a top. Every time I see the top, I'm like, Carrie gave me this, you know. <laughs> you have to remember these things. It's what makes you who you are as a person. But anyways, guys, I am going to go and attend to Mateo because I'm sure he's back now. And maybe I can touch on some more another time.